Hello nerds! Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your week in Nerddom TV edition for the week of July the 3rd. Happy 4th of July, by the way. 2018. We're continuing with the vlogging of the news because I'm still doing chores. And let's jump into the intro real quick. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me and talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On Generally Nerdy. Yeah. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Before we jump in the news, let's hit in on the sponsor for the week. This week we're sponsored again by Mercari and by Poshmark. Uh, we are selling stuff on both Mercari and Poshmark. There's a lot of stuff up there. Pictures should be cycling on your screen right now. Uh, this is a necessary part of uh living in this place that we are living so we're trying to to cull the the clothing issue <laughs> so check it out links in the description to both the mercari and the poshmark sites where we are selling all of our stuff and now let's jump into the news first thing we're talking about this week for television news while i make my dogs some treats First thing is American Horror Story, uh, season eight, I believe. They just announced. They just announced that it will be premiering on September 12th. Uh, still no word on what the theme of this season is going to be, what the setting no actually i take that back this is going to be the crossover uh season between coven and uh the other one <laughs> this is gonna be a crossover this is gonna tie because a lot of their seasons have played into in some vague way other seasons this season is going to cross coven with murder house i think so season four with season one, if I'm remembering that correctly. Uh, so that'll be interesting. It, I mean, there, there have been only like two direct references to other seasons and it wasn't either of those. So I don't know. I, I dig it even though the last season was a little too much on the politics for me. Hopefully this season will be different. I doubt that's going to be the case, but you never know. So, real quick bonus for any of you that have watched the Renaissance Nerd videos, we're going to hone our knife real quick so that I can cut that that sweet potato for the pups. Um, to hone, you're not sharpening. This is not a sharpener. This is a honer. Uh, all you're doing, basically the metal on your blade tends to start bending in ever so micro a fashion uh, the honer takes that bend and re straightens it whereas if we were sharpening it would take off the bend and give you a brand new edge this just straightens the edge that's already there so it doesn't sharpen anyway next on our list is a little show called Alfred Pennyworth when you're doing this you want to do at an angle you should feel a little bit of resistance. You're looking at about a 20, 30 degree angle, somewhere in that neighborhood. You don't want it to be full on 45 because then you're just bending that curve back and forth. Um, anyway, Alfred Pennyworth. Uh, Epics is making a series called Alfred Pennyworth. And they're looking to go into production as of this fall on this show it's being billed as a spin-off to batman somehow 
is it a spin-off to the Fox show, which we shall not mention? Or is it just a spin-off in that Alfred is a Batman character and so it's kind of a spin-off from the books? Is it a spin-off from the DC universe, the extended universe, the movies? Uh, they have not said, and hopefully before they go into actual production, we will have a better idea. I'm not sure where the ownership lies with Epics. If they're owned by Fox, then it very well could be a spin-off of the show, which we shall not mention. Um, at which point, it's already lost. There's no reason to watch it. But if they're trying to bill it as a spin-off from the extended universe, perhaps that could be a good thing. Uh, or if they're building it as an, a spin-off story from what we know from the comic books, that's probably their best route to take. Then they're not beholden to any casting, they're not beholden to really anything except for the true Batman stories, and it, you, you can't go wrong if you're following the comics, is something that we've learned a long time ago. Next on our list is The Walking Dead and this one's actually kind of interesting uh, this potentially could play out in AMC's favor uh, so new showrunner new as of last season Angela Kang who has been there the whole time and I'm chopping now so pardon the noise uh, who's been there the whole time she announced this past week, or at least since we last did an episode of Week in Nerddom, she announced that next season there's going to be a significant time jump. Uh, she didn't specify exactly how much of a time jump there was going to be. She just said that there was going to be one. So that leads us to potentially think they're going to be bypassing a couple of the stories from the comic in order to get to uh, my hope is that they're doing it in order to get to the uh the new world order storyline that the comics are in now because one of the issues that people are having with the walking dead is that Every season, effectively, every story arc is probably more appropriate, is basically the same. You have Rick and company finding a place to live, and then someone contesting their place to live, and them defending it with a lot of death and such. And it's been that way for a few seasons, which again is why a lot of people are getting uh, disenfranchised with the series. So this could be moving them forward closer to the point where we lose that tribal aspect and we get into more character driven stuff that but that, that that kind of is a drawback though because then not only are the zombies secondary they're pushed even further beyond secondary they're they're barely even relevant and that's kind of the premise of the show isn't it is the zombie apocalypse so if you make the premise an afterthought what is that going to do to your ratings um again they get better ratings than a fair amount of cable television so it's not like uh it's, it's not like they're hurting, that they're, like they're dying from the low ratings. They're just lower than they have been, right? So, I don't know. That's just a very interesting, very, very interesting bit. I don't know. Does that mean we're not getting the whispers? Does that mean we're skipping? There's a, there's a lot of stuff to, to, to skip. And how do you skip it and still touch on fan favorite stuff? Because that's what you're trying to do, is you're trying to get the fans back into the show. You're trying to get the people who read the comics, who are your fan base to begin with, to enjoy your show again. So, I don't know. I don't know what this means. But I, I, I guess I'm going to hand that off to you guys. What do you think they're going to skip? And 
potentially what they could do is take something from the time frame in the comics that they're technically skipping and then just move it down and add it as a secondary storyline or a secondary plot to something that they're skipping towards. So again, very interesting. And this also will help, uh, this also will help with getting rid of Maggie and Rick because both of those actors, as we've discussed extensively, Andrew Lincoln and uh, uh, Lauren Cohen, um, are, this is their last season. Maggie potentially could be coming back for season 10. She's just very, going to be very limited at the very least in season nine. So, uh, I don't know. I'm handing this one off to you guys. What do you think this time gap is going to equate to as far as uh, the stories we're going to get in season nine? I would love to hear your thoughts. Again, bonus round for the Renaissance nerd viewers. These are just slices of sweet potato. You can't really see them in this light so great. Those are just slices of sweet potato. Uh, turn your oven to 200 degrees or so. Cook those bad boys super slow and you've got some great dog treats. Don't add any oil, don't add any salt. Just basically de oven drying your sweet potatoes. Anyway, sorry my face is not on camera right now, but our last bit in television news, and these little guys will happen. That just is a thing. Our, our last bit of news has to do with Showtime. The same television company that is going to be running the King Killer series, or that owns the King Killer ser series right now. Um, Lord knows if, there's, if we're actually going to see anything from the King Killer series from them. They just ordered 10 issues, or 10 episodes rather, of Halo. Uh, I couldn't find who was going to be making it for Showtime. But that, for our purposes, at least this week, is relatively irrelevant because... Wait, no. I think I did. Let me, let me consult the notes again. Yes, I did. Ho ho ho! Uh, the show is going to be show. The showrunner is going to be Kyle Killen, who did Awake, and then uh, Rupert Wyatt, who directed Rise of the Planet of the Apes, is going to direct a handful of episodes. So I do know who's in charge of it. Uh, I don't know what Awake is though, so I don't know what to expect out of this. Though. This has been something that basically since Halo 2 came out has been on our nerdy radar because they've been talking about it. Microsoft has been selling those rights and then they get defaulted back every, every few years. So now the rights are in the hands of Showtime and that it, and they ordered, they actually ordered episodes, so we are likely to see a Halo series, which is going to be interesting, to say the least, uh, show up on Showtime. So Showtime is just trying to get all of your premium cable bucks. They... I don't know. It, this is potentially an awesome thing, because HBO is losing one of their biggest series. Game of Thrones ends this year. Oh, and so if Game of Thrones is coming to an end and the future is uncertain, as they say, for HBO. Also note, we're lining our pan with some foil. Shiny side up. But if the, if the future is uncertain, oh, I'm too low. If the future is uncertain for HBO, then that gives Showtime, who is probably one of their biggest competitors, though that's not really saying much because Showtime gets so much of the, uh, the airtime or the, I forget what they, the, the ratings. There's a better word for it, but I don't remember what it is. Um, because Showtime gets so much more ratings, we're just gonna go with that. Uh, 
it, it's not saying much or HBO rather gets so much more ratings than Showtime higher ratings uh, that's that's not saying much that they're the next step up but with Game of Thrones coming to an end that could change the dichotomy especially if the King Killer series is half as good as the books then it's gonna blow Game of Thrones right out of the water and if they can convert some of the fans of Halo, then they're going to be the new top dog in premium cable channels. So I, this, this could be a very exciting time for premium channels, even though subscription-based channels are kind of what's on the rise right now. Uh, this could be the old dogs coming in and showing us how it's done. Who knows? Uh, we're only going to know once those shows hit. And tell me how excited you are for Halo and also King Killer because if they actually end up making the show, which hopefully they do, because again, one of the best pieces of literature you've read in the last decade. I can say that wholeheartedly and believe it because it's amazing. It is it changes the way you view other literature. That's how good th these books are. Anyway, Patrick Rothfuss aside, that is where we're ending this week's TV episode, guys. What did I miss? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down low. If though you want to go deeper in the conversation, there is a website, generallynerdy.net. Jump over there, check out all the freebies, uh, check out the nerdy swag. There are links to the stores and such. Go check out generallynerdy.net. It's been a little neglected the last few weeks. I hope to rectify that soon, but all of the links are still up, so check it out. And if you would rather support more directly, there is a Patreon, patreon.com slash generallynerdy. There's four tiers. The lowest tier is a dollar a month. Get on for a dollar a month. Get all kinds of great stuff for just a dollar. Uh, check that out, patreon.com slash generallynerdy. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. If you like the episode, hit the like button. All of the stuff that you know uh, everybody else says in their videos, and I have to do it as well. Uh, and ring the bell. Don't forget to ring the bell. Thank you, phone, for reminding me of that. Uh, because subscriptions really don't mean much on YouTube these days. If you're falling behind in your nerd news and you want to catch up, click or tap the box right there to the left of my face to do that. But before we click boxes and do all the stuff, guys, always... Always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here. And that is how you vlog the news.